In this demonstration of Fiddler, we're going to show Fiddler's ability to manipulate both the request and the response, as well as show how breakpoints work. Let's start out by creating a web session with a simple page which is designed for tampering, Fiddler 2 sandbox page. Internet Explorer launches and gives us some options in our different example pages. Let's play with a shopping cart example. In the shopping cart example, we've got a fake computer store and we can purchase computers here. So let's set a request for two computers at $19.95 each and let's click order. Now you can see there's an order of two Acer convertible tablets at $19.95 each. The total is $3,990. So if we were to actually go and change that to say three and click order, we have a total of, again, $5,985. Now one of the interesting things as you're manipulating your application is to see what's different about these two requests. So at first, it's pretty obvious in this case, but if you have something more complicated, it may be difficult to tell the difference between the traffic. You can simply select two sessions and choose compare to launch a WinDiff based comparison of the requests and the responses. And in this case, you can pretty plainly see the request lines uh, are a little bit different. So you can see that there's label quantity 2 versus label quantity 3 and so forth. So in a trivial example like this one, this isn't a very powerful feature, but in a more complicated ASP.NET site, this is actually a very useful feature. Now, let's actually manipulate. So in order to manipulate a session, you need to be stuck at a breakpoint. Now you can create breakpoints by the rules menu. You can have automatic breakpoints that execute for every request or every response. You can use customized rules to write complicated scripting based breakpoints that break only when certain conditions are met. Or you can use the quick exec box down here to create simple breakpoints. So let's create a simple breakpoint for whenever this URL is hit. There's two common rules that you can use. You can either use BPU to breakpoint on this URL, or you can type breakpoint after to create a response breakpoint that executes once this URL has been returned from the server. In this case, we want to manipulate the price, so let's create a request breakpoint for this URL. Let's type BPU, and we can use the Control I key to actually insert the selected URL from the HTTP sessions list. Now when we hit enter, we've created a request URI breakpoint for this page. So let's go back to our tablet PC superstore, click back, and let's change our requested quantity back to one and click order. Now you can see the request in Fiddler is now broken and we're taken immediately to the text view which allows us to tamper with the HTTP form. You can see that we're creating a post and it's going to checkout.asp. All of our user agent variables and so forth are set appropriately. If needed, we can manipulate our session cookie, although in this case we're not going to manipulate the cookie. We could change the referrer if we wanted. If we wanted to change the referrer to be coming from another site, you can just double click on it and you can change it to something else, like in this case, you know, another site. This can be useful for spoofing some form-based authentication mechanisms that trivially check the referrer. But let's go back to the form. The forms here, this is the forms inspector, which is read-only, but the text view inspector is not. So we can change our cost here to $5 each, and we can change the name of our product to Acer Convertible Hacked, and we can change our quantity to, for instance, 10. Now, in order to submit this request to the server, we have two options. We can either submit it and break on the HTTP response from the server so that we can manipulate the response, or we can simply run the request to completion, sending it to the server and then sending the server's response to the client. Let's run to completion. As you can see, in the Tablet Superstore, we've now ordered 10 of the tablet Acer hacked convertible tablets at a cost of $5 each. Your total is $50. This is a very simple example of re request URI tampering. Now, let's actually remove that URL just by typing BPU blank so that we're no longer going to break point on that URL. Now let's type BP after to create a response breakpoint on the same URL. So let's go back and this time let's order a different machine. Let's click order. Now in this case you can see that we're bro broken on the response. This has already been sent to the server so the cost of 1995 and so forth has already been sent but in this case we're now broken on the response so we can change the response here where we can change 
the the data such that we could say, for instance, your order was stolen. Bummer. Or if we wanted, we could actually choose response using this drop down, and we could actually find a file on the local machine and return that as if the server had responded with that. Or we can pick a selected file out of the, the Fiddler Captures folder. In this case, I don't have any, so only the generic 404 is available. But let's not actually do that in this case. Let's just make our, our modifications here. And we'll change our font color to red, semicolon, and choose Run to Completion. Now, if we go back to our Tablet PC Superstore, you can see that my CSS skills are somewhat lacking since it's not red but the order was successfully stolen. So in this way, you can both manipulate the requests and the responses. Tampering by hand is very useful for penetration testing and other simple tasks, but when you want to create a more complicated test case, sometimes it's needed, you must use the rules to actually create automatic tampering. Or you can manually tamper, as we did in this case, for cases where you're looking at something that's more intricate. If you want to manipulate a session, again, you can actually either revisit an IE, or you can, if you want Fiddler to just make the request on your behalf, you can actually choose to reissue selected requests. And this will actually just cause Fiddler to make the HTTP request so that you can manipulate the server behavior without the client even being involved, the IE client. So here we can make a different change. Now in this case, if we make a different change, nobody's going to see it, of course, because we're not actually attached to a browser at the moment. But this is a simple way that you can manipulate the server, particularly if you're doing request breakpoints. You can pass different values to see whether or not the server cares. So for instance, if we were to go back and turn off our breakpoint after rule, but turn back our breakpoint on URL rule back again, now if we reissue this request, we can actually, for instance, you know, wipe out the, the, the post altogether, you know, change, change the mechanism, no cookies, get rid of the content type, get rid of all the custom headers, change, you know, send this stripped request up to the server and see what the server responds with. And as you can see here, basically, the server responds with the redirection, ret redirecting you back out to the default sandbox page because it was missing its form parameters. In any case, that'll give you a pretty, pretty simple view of the ways in which you can use Fiddler to manipulate requests and responses. Happy fiddling!